Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Tom Jensen. My guest this week is Mike Szymanski. Mike is the head waterfowl biologist with Game and Fish. We're going to talk about waterfowl. Uh, Mike, you and your crews are compiling data that you gathered from your breeding duck surveys. Um, I guess people want to know exactly what are breeding duck surveys. Well, Tom, we uh, conduct the survey every year across the state of North Dakota. We have a few crews that go out. We cover eight transects that run north and south. They pretty much go from the South Dakota border up to the Canadian border. And we have a total of 1,816 miles that we run. And when we do that, we on have- On each transect? On each, well, no, total for the four transects is okay. 1,816 miles. <laughs> and we have uh, two guys on each crew. So uh, we're counting out each side of the vehicle, 220 yards each side. And then when we do that, we're also totaling up the uh, species we're seeing and the, uh, I guess how the groups are comprised of each species as we see them so we can factor in nesting hens and things like that. Just in case people may have seen you on the roads, it's really fascinating how you do it. And you stop at every water hole yep. and waterway and yep. some place where there might be a duck hiding. Yep, every place there could be a duck, we stop and give it a good look over to see what's out there, and then we also count the, the water that we're seeing too. All right, how often do you do these monitoring efforts? We do them once a year. Uh, we try to time them. They're always in May. Uh, we try to time them to match up with the kind of how the spring is progressing. We have a, a weekly migration route that we also run to help time this survey. And uh, typically it's uh, right in the middle of May. Sometimes it's, you know, towards the first week of May, sometimes the third week of May if we're having a little bit later spring. Um, this year it was, uh, we started pretty early thinking we were having an early dry spring and then it, <laughs> it turned around pretty quickly on us. Well, as long as we're talking about water now, uh, we've had quite a bit of rain lately. How is the water situation in North Dakota? It's actually uh, pretty good, again, for waterfowl. Um, we were looking very dry to start off with. Uh, we were uh, having a lot of uh, seasonal and temporary wetlands dry up in April, they, they usually dry up in the summertime, but they were drying up in April this year. And as we all know, April was quite dry and fairly warm, and then it all kind of turned around on a dime uh, right about the first week of May, where about well, <laughs> half of North Dakota probably got about a third of the year's precipitation in a 10-day period. Right, I think everybody remembers the burn bands that were on and things like oh, that. Yeah. Like yeah. you mentioned, the water, uh, some of the water was drying up and stuff like that. Water situation might be good, but the loss of CRP, uh, the Conservation yep. Reserve Program, is uh, not good. It's tough. We've lost a lot of acres in the state. Those acres provide uh, secure nesting cover for waterfowl and other ground nesting birds. That's very important for providing abundant hunting opportunities for folks. Um, you know, when, when wetland conditions are super, super good, ducks can still do okay as a little bit of CRP declines, but when we dry up, we're, we're really gonna start feeling the, the, the hit that we've had on CRP. Uh, well, I guess what are we finding out in these uh, breeding pairs survey? Well, we're, uh, we're, we're still sitting pretty good, really, for, for duck numbers. We're really riding the big wave we've had over the last 20 years, and especially the last few years, again, being wet and still having a little bit of CRP out there, you know. Um, most of the prairie pothole region has been wet the few year, last few years, so a lot of ducks have been produced and, and duck populations overall are good. In the state, we went down, uh, as compared to last year, about 25%. And our numbers are still preliminary. We're still compiling some stuff, but overall, that's what it looks like. Most species are down. Um, Gadwall and Widgeon are pretty similar to last year. Um, the two that took the biggest uh, hits or, or saw the largest declines in the state were pintails and shovelers. And, you know, it's one of those deals where it's not like there's half as many of them as there were last year. Uh, we, were, we were pretty dry in April, so we had a lot of birds come through, kind of sit around for a couple of days and move on, just seeing how dry it was and things are drying up. So uh, I'm pretty confident that those birds are you know, moving on in the areas in Prairie Canada to breed. But yeah, overall, our our nesting uh, duck population is down a fair bit. But it's it's still good. It's it's uh, our 19th highest, and uh, 
you know, like it's been for the last 21 years now. Sure. All of those 21 years are our highest <laughs> years. So it's, it's not one of the better ones in the last 21 years. Right, you mentioned the Canadian prairies, Saskatchewan, mm -hmm. and Manitoba, Alberta. What are we hearing from our neighbors to the north? Good conditions. Um, we don't have any kind of population estimates. That area is covered as part of the overall uh, cooperative uh, monitoring survey that's done with state and provincial partners, Canadian Wildlife Service and the Fish and Wildlife Service. So uh, those numbers won't come out probably until like July. Mm -hmm. And uh, they also have an estimate for North Dakota that'll be part of that mix. Were there any surprises in these monitoring efforts? You know, I guess what surprised me the most was how fast some of the ducks found um, these places that were dry and then got wet like uh, in the first week of May, they had been dry virtually all spring. And, you know, I don't know if the ducks were just crowded into some other wet areas and spread out or, or how they got into them so fast, but places that were wet literally for a week had pairs with territories on them. All in all, should be another good year for waterfall enthusiasts? Well, one can only hope, but, uh, you know, we need a little help from the weather on that one, too. But we, we are set up with uh, good, good numbers of ducks. Uh, provided we have a good breeding effort again and, and reproductive effort during the summer, but we're sitting okay. All right, Mike, thanks. Now that summer is in full swing, boaters and anglers are making good use of our North Dakota lakes and rivers. You're reminded, though, to practice good safety habits while on the water. It's recommended all boaters wear a personal flotation device while on the water. And remember, it is a law that children ages 10 and under must wear a life jacket. Also, jet ski operators or persons being towed on skis, tubes, boards, and other devices are required to wear a life jacket. Regulations to help ensure safe boating this summer are found in the North Dakota Fishing Guide or for a more comprehensive listing of water safety guidelines, get a copy of the North Dakota Boat and Water Safety Guide or the Boat North Dakota Education Book. These guides are available online at the Game and Fish website at gf.nd.gov, by email at ndgf at nd.gov, or at a local Game and Fish Department office. For Mike Szymanski and the rest of the staff here at North Dakota Game and Fish, thanks for joining us for Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.